Welcome. In this Apprentice blog, we're going to be taking a look at how to model this soccer ball. Now, Houdini comes with a platonic solid that has the topology of a soccer ball, but it's all squared off and does not have the nice roundness of a, so of a real soccer ball, and also does not have all the little grooves and details that we have in here. So we're going to start with that platonic solid, and we're going to build up towards this rounded soccer ball. And all the details that we see around here in terms of the extruded little pieces, patches, uh, that's going to be done using something called the for each SOP, which allows us to focus on one item at a time, model that, and then have those operations repeated for many, many different pieces, in this case all the patches. So we'll get to that um, right away. Let's start with the platonic solid. We're going to put that at the origin comes in as a tetrahedron. We're going to change that to the soccer ball topology. Let's zoom in on that. And what you can see is we've got the basic patches that we need for a soccer ball, but of course it's all squared off and not looking, looking, looking quite right. So to smooth that off, we're going to go to the polygon tab and we're going to subdivide that model. Uh, let's look at this model as a smooth wire shaded and let's add a little bit of depth so we get a little more pieces here. Now this is a pretty good smooth rounded soccer ball, except it sort of seems to be a little flattened out over there. Uh, it's not perfectly uh, spherical. So we're going to deal with that by going and putting a sphere node down and putting a ray node down. And what we can do is we can use the sphere node uh, as a projector to project out the subdivided patches. So now we get a perfectly round piece. Now the one problem that we have here is that we want to start deal modeling these little patches here but now that it's been subdivided it's much harder to find those patches because now each patch is made up of multiple little, little faces of its own. So what we can do is we want to go back to the original model here uh, which has made up of certain primitive numbers. Each one of these faces has a primitive number. We want to use those primitive numbers to help us uh, work on our model. So we're going to go in there and we're going to put an attribute create down. Now the attribute create, uh, we're going to give it a, pr a number of prim num and we're going to make it a primitive attribute and we're going to give it a value of dollar $PR. Basically saying take the primitive number that's assigned to each of those primitives and assign it to itself as an attribute that we can use down the line. And the place we're going to use that is here when we put a for each node down. So we're going to put that down, display that. In this case we're going to say use an attribute value and we're going to go prim num. Now you notice that these have been slightly separated out because it's going to look at each primitive number individually uh, and then allow you to do things to it. So if we double click onto here and we go down, you'll see that we now have one of those primitive numbers has been set up in this sort of each node. Now we can start modeling that. So if we take that and we, in this case, let's say poly extrude that. Let's pull that out a little bit. We're going to say share those with average positions. Uh, we're going to add uh, an extra bit of detail to the side. And let's put a slight inset into there. There we go. So we've done this sort of extrusion into the patch there. Now, when we go up one level, what we'll find is what we've done to this one patch, we've actually done to all the patches. And the for each stop gives us that capability. So now that we have that, we can right click on here. And what we're going to do is just put a subdivide node down. Uh, oop, and one of the things that we notice is when we did the for each SOP, uh, all the pieces were actually um, separated out. So before we do that, we should actually put a fuse SOP down, which will fuse the points. Now when we go to the subdivide, we'll see that everything's looking exactly the way we want. And if we go into here and look at the smooth shaded, you'll see that's uh, exactly the shape that we want. Now if we want to refine and work with this, what we can simply do is we can pin down this node here, dive back down into the for each SOP, and now we can start to play with this particular piece here. So for instance, we could say, well, we don't want to extrude quite as much. Um, and we want the inset to be, let's say, a yeah, 0.3. So now we've got a soccer ball that looks like it's, it's sort of got grooves in it, but it's sort of a coherent ball. So it's like a cheap soccer ball you might get, um, you know. Um, but if you want it to feel a little bit more like it's got a patch 
uh, sort of shape to it. Uh, we could actually make give that a little bit of depth and now we've got pieces it feels more like we've got leather pieces actually stitched together so we're able to refine how each of those patches work and it gets propagated around the model uh, within the procedural network uh, here in Houdini so there we go with the final look of the model now when it comes time to render this um, what we can do is we can actually render this model here which is the one before the subdivide uh, now we can display this and if we press the control key we can make that the, what's known as the render node so it's going to render that one there and then when we get up to the object level uh, we go render geometry uh, render a subdivision and when we do that we will get ourselves a rendered model just like this so I hope this uh, lesson has given you a chance to see how the for each sop can help you work on individual little patches uh, and have them propagate uh, throughout a complete topology uh, and has shown you a little bit about what Houdini's procedural networks can do for you. Thanks a lot.